Hello everybody and welcome to this lecture series on chapter 4 which is accounting for merchandising operations. And you may be wondering why what in the world do Paris Hilton and Kim Kardashian um, and all of their shopping bags have to do with accounting? Well you're going to find out. So what you're going to be learning in this lecture series um, is kind of the basic concepts that I want you to know from chapter four that I don't plan to lecture on in class. Um, these are going to be covered in the quiz, so I'm not planning to lecture on these in class. Um, but you could have, you should have read about them in your book. But I definitely want to make sure to, to clarify these concepts so that when you get to class, you are familiar with them, and then we can move on and build on these basic concepts um, and, and talk about some more complex situations related to these concepts. So the first thing we're going to cover, um, because chapter four is on merchandising operations, we're going to talk, learn about um, what merchandising companies are and different types of merchandising companies. Then we're going to talk about the operating cycle of a merchandiser. Um, then we'll talk about the accounting for merchandise inventory. And the two basic entries uh, that I want you guys to know are the entries when a company purchases inventory and when a company sells inventory. Um, and we're going to talk about uh, the difference between the terms cost and price. Um, and, and when we use them in which, which situations we use each of those items, okay? Believe it or not, those are two different numbers, uh, so you need to understand the difference between the two. Um, then we're going to talk about how these entries flow to the financial statements, the income statement and the balance sheet. We're going to learn about what gross profit is. And then I'm going to introduce you to our next ratio calculation that you guys are going to be doing for your companies, and that is the gross margin or gross profit ratio. Okay, so first of all, let's talk about what merchandise inventory is. Okay, merchandise inventory is products that a company owns with the intent to sell. Okay, so um, that's like if this is a grocery store, all of these items sitting on the store shelves are considered merchandise inventory because the grocery store is planning to sell them. They're not planning to use them, okay? This isn't a restaurant where the restaurant is going to use the milk and use the yogurt and use the whipped cream or whatever is on this shelf. They're not using it. They plan to sell it. So that's the difference between inventory, um, I'm sorry, merchandise inventory, and then like maybe some other stuff that um, that a company's planning to use. Um, so so like supplies, right? Supplies would be something that a company uses itself, not that the company's planning to sell, okay? So my question to you guys, now that we know what inventory is, what kind of account is it? Asset, liability, equity, revenue, expense, what do you think it is? Think on that for a minute. So hopefully, when you guys thought about that, you identified correctly that merchandise inventory is an asset. Okay, so an asset, as we've learned um, all the way back in week one, is something that a company owns um, that is ex expected to bring future benefit. Well, inventory is something that the company owns, right? It's on our shelves. We paid for it and put it on our store shelves. Um, and then the second thing is that it brings a future benefit. Well, what future benefit does inventory bring? Well, if we sell this inventory, that helps our company make money. And making money is a future benefit, right? Because it provides us with cash and that cash we can use to, um, you know, buy more inventory, pay our employees, pay our rent, open another store, whatever else it is that we need to do. So uh, inventory is indeed an asset. 
Okay, so now I want to talk about uh, different types of companies that have inventory. Okay, um, there are two different types of companies that have inventory, manufacturing versus merchandising companies. So first of all, let me take a step back. Okay, in this class up to this point, chapters one, two, and three, all of our examples were companies that were what we call service companies. That means that they make their money by providing a service, whether that's legal services, whether that's consulting services, whether it's mowing somebody's lawn, whether it's giving somebody a haircut. All of these things are services. So we're not selling a physical product, we're selling our knowledge, our expertise, our um, labor, our manual labor. And, and those are things that, you know, have different issues than a company that sells a product, that sells stuff. So when there is a physical object that you're selling, there's unique accounting issues that we have to deal with. So starting now in chapter four, the types of companies that we're gonna be talking about in, in chapters four and five really, are companies that sell stuff, that sell a physical product. Now, even within that category of companies that sell a product, there are subcategories within there, okay? Now, companies that sell a product can fall into one of two categories. Either it's a manufacturing company or a merchandising company. Um, a manufacturing company is a company that makes the product and then sells it. So an example of that here is the Coca-Cola company, okay? And right here you see a picture of Coca-Cola's factory. And that indicates that Coca-Cola produced the product, the bottles of Coke or cans of Coke or whatever, and then they sell it. Um, in this particular class, we are not going to be specifically dealing with the accounting for manufacturing companies. Now, a lot of you guys may have chosen manufacturing companies for your team project, and that's totally fine, but we're not necessarily going to be talking about the specific journal entries related to producing a product. All of that is going to be covered in Accounting 1B, okay? We're going to learn about the specific journal entries that you record when you are producing a product. Um, instead, in this class, we're going to be talking about merchandising companies. And merchandising companies are companies that purchase the merchandise in ready-to-sell condition and then sell it. Okay, they don't make anything. They just provide customers with a place to sell it. So uh, a good example of a merchandiser is a grocery store like this. Okay, the grocery store, Ralph's or Vaughn's or Albertson's or wherever it is that you do your grocery shopping, they don't make all of these products, but Ralph's does not make ketchup and mustard and uh, cereal and, you know, all of the things that you see in a grocery store. There is actually no one company that can make all of that stuff. Uh, but rather, what the merchandiser does is it provides customers with a place where they can purchase all of those different items in one place to make it convenient for the customer, right? That's that's why we have grocery stores, because we don't want to go to a separate store to get our meat, and a separate store to get our vegetables, and a separate store to get our ketchup, and a separate store to get our cereal. We want to get all of our food items in one place, and that's why we have companies like Ralph's and Vaughn's that provide that to the customer, provide us a place to buy all that stuff in one spot, okay? Um, so, so again, they don't make anything. They just purchase it from, from all of those different companies, from Heinz, from Kellogg's, from, um, you know, Skippy peanut butter, whatever it is, they're buying it from all of those different manufacturers, putting it in their store and then making it easy for us to buy. They don't, they don't do anything to those products. It's ready to sell. All they do really is just put it on the shelf and make it accessible to us. So that's what a merchandising company is. And that's the kind of accounting we're going to be learning in chapters four and five.
okay? Um, now, within that category of merchandising companies, there are subcategories there, okay? The next subcategories within merchandising companies are retailers and wholesalers, okay? So, I'm gonna start first with retailers because retailers are the companies that you and I are probably most familiar with because this is where we shop, okay? What a retailer is, is a retailer is a company that sells merchandise directly to the public, okay, to you and me. We can walk into a store and buy stuff, okay? And retailers can be big or small, okay? An example of a big retailer would be like Target or Walmart or, um, like I said, all those grocery stores, Ralph's and Vons and things like that. Um, or a retailer can be small. Okay. I have just this, you know, generic picture here of little shop, but, but this could be, you know, the, the liquor store on the corner. This could be a little boutique that you like to shop at or a little, you know, gift shop that you like to shop at. Um, where it's just that, you know, that one store and it's small. Okay. Um, but the point is, is that they sell to the general public. You and I can all walk into these stores and buy stuff. Um, separately, there are what we call wholesalers, okay? And wholesalers are different because they buy merchandise from several different manufacturers and then sell the merchandise to retailers, okay? They don't sell to the general public. They only sell to other businesses. Um, so what you see here is a picture of what a wholesaler will generally generally look like. And, and when you look at it, it looks different than what like a Target store would look like or even a Walmart store would look like, okay? Now, if you walk into a Target or a Walmart, they have, you know, you know, cute displays and signage kind of advertising certain things and everything is, you know, in relatively small quantities. Um... And they, they try to make it a pleasant shopping experience for the customer. But if you look here at this picture of a wholesaler, this kind of looks like a warehouse. And you see all the pallets stacked up over here. And you don't really see any, you know, attractive signage or cute displays or anything like that. It's just, you know, large quantities of the product all laid out like that. And the reason why is because Again, wholesalers are selling to other businesses. Those other businesses are just going to get in there, get their stuff, and take it back to their own store and put it on their sh shelves. So, so a wholesaler doesn't need to make it pretty, doesn't need to make it pleasant, whereas like a Target or a boutique or a little shop would need to, you know, make it a pleasant experience for um, for their customers, okay? Um, now, I always get questions about, oh, but what about Costco wholesale? Like, I can shop at Costco wholesale, right? And that's true. Okay, um, but let me tell you the reason why Costco is called Costco Wholesale. So Costco was originally intended to be a wholesaler, to a, be a company that sells stuff to other businesses. Um, and that's why it kind of, a Costco kind of looks like this, right? Um, it wasn't in, originally intended to sell to the general public. And in fact, Costco sells a lot to other businesses. I know a lot of uh, like restaurants and um, small businesses shop at Costco. Okay, and the reason why the public is allowed to shop at Costco and they're not really the public, they have to pay a membership. So it's not the general public. Okay, so so Costco is considered a wholesaler. If you buy a membership, yes, you can you can shop there. So so there is some kind of overlap, but generally consider um, that that a wholesaler is a company that sells to other businesses. Okay, so again, the flow kind of looks like this. Um, um, manufacturers, various manufacturers, they make this stuff. So here I've got examples of Coke and Pepsi and Hershey. Um, and these big companies are, or manufacturers are going to sell mostly to large retailers like Target or Walmart or to wholesalers. Okay. They don't have time to sell like small quantities to the little corner liquor store or to the little boutique. They don't have time for that. So instead they say, look, we're going to sell to wholesalers and then the wholesalers are going to sell to the little shop and that's the reason why we have wholesalers is because um they're necessary to sell to the little guys and so that's all of our um merchandising companies